Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at making snap fits using the sweep features in Fusion 360. Let's jump into this week's project. So this is a little four button keypad. It's in the shape of a kitty paw, and there's a little display in the center there. The idea is that this can be a USB controller or a MIDI controller if you wanna do some music. There are some uh, Cherry MX compatible switches, some KL switches on the inside here, and it's a snap fit uh, enclosure that has a really interesting way that it uses the snap fits. They actually sweep along the path of the shape here. So in today's tutorial, I wanna show you how I put that together and some of the things to watch out for <laughs> when you are uh, using the sweeps command feature in Fusion 360. This was inspired by this little keycap, by the way. This is a little kitty tobing keycap that you put on a, on a standard Cherry MX compatible uh, key and uh, that's really where it came from. So here's this and then here's this ridiculous fun toe bean thing And there's actually kale switches on the inside of these like that. So um, if you want to build this you're in luck we have a learn guide that is Out in public so you can check it out. I have all the all the um, fusion 360 files STL files as well full circuit diagram code code walkthrough wiring assembly it is all ready and, and released for the world. So if you really want to build your own, you can follow along with the tutorial. Or if you want to use some of the parts that were used in this project, I have a lot of the 3D models like the Cutie Pie RP2040 available on our GitHub repo. I don't promote that enough and I really should. So check that out, you got a link there. I also have it in the description of this video. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into Fusion 360. This is the Kitty Pad, this is what it looks like. Uh, as a, as a cross-section view, you have a standard kind of three-piece setup. I have a front cover, a bottom cover, and a frame. And these three kind of work together. This right here is a key plate. Don't worry about that. It's really this that we're going to do. We're going to figure out how to create um, the snap fit geometry for a very bizarre shape like this. Cool. Um, uh, let me show you a quick uh, cat animation of this thing so I can show you kind of what the pieces look like. Um, normally what I like to do is I like to have a three piece setup for an enclosure. I have the frame, which is normally something like this. And I have two covers, one being the top and one being the bottom. Now the top and the bottom and the frame are all using the exact same sketch. They just have some offsets that are built in. So uh, that is gonna lead me to Tenpole. The last tutorial I did was focusing on how to create this uh, kitty paw shape uh, using the spline tool in Fusion 360 and then using uh, sketch constraints like this like the symmetry and the equal uh, the equal um, that's the name of the uh, of the sketch constraint it's just called equal so definitely check that out it's like a good half an hour of uh, walking through setting up symmetrical spline. So this shape is completely done with the spline tool. It's a complete closed loop. There are um, Bezier curves and the Bezier curves are actually symmetrical. So when one side gets changed, the other side uh, reflects that change. Also the placement and position of the points are also mirrored. Um, they're mirrored and they're symmetric. Actually, they're not mirrored. They're just symmetric. <laughs> I get the this is confused, but yeah, uh, definitely check out the tutorial. I have a link in the description, of course, to that video. And you can see how to uh, how to create a symmetrical spline shape like this because it's all done with the spline tool. Now you could use a different program to create your your geometry like this, but I tend to stick with Fusion's tools because sometimes when I bring in um, geometry from outside, uh, things like Illustrator, um, it tends to not work that well in Fusion 360. So that's why it's a spline tool. All right. So with that in way, I'm gonna kind of step through this thing. We're just gonna start off as if we have our sketch already laid out and we're ready to kind of start extruding. Um, so the first thing is to extrude it. Um, and the, the reason why I have this extrusion so long, normally my extrusions are like one and a half millimeters. Uh, but this time what I really wanna do is add more geometry so that I could really add a fillet on this, on this bottom edge here so that I can have an extreme fillet like three or four millimeters. So that's why I have an extra extrusion, okay? So that's this shape, it's just a standard extrusion. The next thing is to kind of create another sketch and project in this geometry and then do an offset, right? So the idea here is it's just gonna create a bit of a cavity for us so that we can optimize the print a little bit. It doesn't have to actually be this thick, um, so we can kind of eat away at this right here. 
to kind of make it thinner. So that's why that sketch is there. The next sketch is what we're going to use to create our snap fit geometry. So let's jump into this one. Uh, really, let me kind of recreate this, just kind of show you. So I'm going to activate my component so I can work within it. And it, when you do a inspect, go to section analysis, you can select any one of these um, default construction planes, these little, these little orange squares. So I'm going to click on this one, and that gives me a cross section of this of this of this side right so now i can see this is actually where i want my sketch to be so i'll hit okay and now i'll grab a create sketch making sure i'm in the component and then i'll use that orange triangle to draw my sketch so let's go ahead and just kind of create the geometry and i'll show you why you would want to do segments in your sweeps so for starters i'm going to uh, grab an edge, right? So let me turn off the, the analysis. You can see my grid's still here. What I want to do is I want to project in this line or any one of these. Like if I were to bring this in, I could project that in, but really I just need this line here because I need a reference point to kind of work off of. And this is kind of my, my point. So I have that selected. I'll hit the, the hotkey P, which is the hotkey for project, and that will project that dot into the sketch and it'll show up as a purple dot. That lets me know that it is a referenced projected uh, geometry. So now with that, I can start drawing out my my uh, my shape for my for my my snap fit. So it's going to be a triangle, so something like this. And I just kind of freehand drawed it. The only constraints that are set up is this one here, which is perfect. It's a horizontal constraint. That's what I want. And I wanted to find this to be two millimeters tall. And then I want to define these two lines to have a 45 degree, okay? And then I'll grab these two lines, right, with the shift, select, and then I'll tell these two that they need to be perpendicular so that they're square. All right. So that is my kind of base thing. And the next thing is to draw the, the, sh the lines that will create my kind of my shape to grab. So it looks like this. It goes out. I want to make sure that there's a perpendicular constraint there. You can see that Fusion just automatically adds that for me. As far as the length, um, I'm just going to freehand it right now. Click down. I want another perpendicular constraint at this corner here between those two lines. And then I also want this right here to be lined up nicely. So until I hit that right there, that lets me know I'm, perp I'm uh, perpendicular with that last line. And I can come in here and then be uh, perpendicular with this line up there and then that closes the shape the last uh, thing I need to do here is to add a dimension a sketch dimension to this line and this line is supposed to be kind of diagonal like that at a 45 degree and I'll make this one and a half millimeters all right so that now I can grab this whole shape and then I can uh, tell it where it needs to go so I actually want to create a line that connects these two dots this dot to this dot Okay, and then I want this line to be straight, going across, horizontal. So I apply a horizontal constraint. And now all I need to do is add a little bit of a dimension to that line. How much? I'm going to put two for now. Two. Okay. And then I can grab this line and then say, I want this to be a construction line by hitting the X key. Let's go ahead and do that to this line as well. And then that's a construction line by hitting the X key. So now what I can do is I can only select the geometry that I want, which is this thing here. Perfect. So now with that done, let's let's apply a sweep to it, right? So again, uh, if we do a section analysis, you see it's right in the center of our of our shape, and our shape is symmetrical, and that's really super important. Okay, well let me turn off section analysis and then uh, bring up my sweep command. There's sweep. I just brought up the design shortcuts with the S key. By the way, my favorite thing of Fusion is the S key. Wherever you hit it, it'll show up. So wherever your mouse is, that's where your menu will show up. So let's say you want it right here. S key, sweep. I don't even have to spell out the whole word, just a couple letters, and here's the sweeps. You want this one, the blue one, because we're in the solid workspace. Hit sweep. First thing you need to do is select. We'll leave this at single path, the type, and then for the profile I want to select, well, this profile here. And then for the path, we can select this entire thing. Shroom. And right away, it's like, ah, it's done. Now, that's okay if you have a pretty simple uh, design that doesn't have any components on the edges. Uh, you can do that just fine. Hit OK, and you're done, right? But I had to be strategic about this because if we look at our kitty pad, let me go back to the design here. You have to. Let me show you the uh, 
kind of remove this, get rid of that. Whoa, 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 slow down. And then get rid of this. I was just hiding it. Get rid of this, this top cover. What I'm trying to show you is the the components that are uh, need to be accounted for, right? So I have a display, it's right here. I have this frame here. Let me get rid of the frame. We're almost there, folks. And then the cutie pie is right here. Let me do a full activate the whole thing. Now look at that. You can see here that uh, if we had a sweep going across this entire shape, we would be intersecting the PCB here. So I strategically said that I'd like to only have sections so that I can accommodate for my, not only just my components, but I, it gives me the ability to actually wedge a spudger between the frame so that I can actually take it apart. If you ever need to take it apart, you need some area to kind of wedge your spudger tool into. And that is why I have it segmented like that. That's why there's this, this separation between these, uh, these, these kind of snap fits. And that just makes it so that it um, is easy to open and accommodates for that USB port. So if I had the sweep going across this whole shape here, you'd see here that I wouldn't be able to do this hole for the USB port. So that's why I needed to be strategic about the, the type of sweep. It just can't sweep along the whole thing. So I'm gonna go back into it. And you have uh, some options here. So the main options is these two distance types. And really the way they work is you have two of these arrows and you can define how much you want here. So as you kind of drag this handle out, you can kind of define uh, how much you want. And there might be an issue here. So let me uh, say like, okay, so I have these two values here and uh, let's say I want them to be the exact same. So one, one, five. They're not actual numbers or more of a, uh, it's like zero to one is, is basically how this works. The distance, it's more of a, it's a bit of a percentage, uh, just a, a whole number is one is 100%. And this would be like point, I don't know, 10% or so. So that's how that's working. So those those values are the same. Now you want to be attention. You want to pay attention to the orientation. Per, uh, perpendicular is is the right one you want. And then for the operation, we want it to join because that's uh, that's going to join it to our solid body here. So I'm gonna hit OK. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And in this case, well, it didn't. Fusion has a warning. It says I could not do this. This isn't valid. And that's kind of BS. It really is valid. I mean, it did it. Here it is. But that's because of something else. So what happens with this is that we kind of need to just do one side. So I'm just going to put zero on one and then leave one of them here like that and hit OK. It still gives me that error, so I'm going to go back into it and hit OK. It keeps doing that over and over again, so hit OK. And this is where we, let's try to, let's try to reverse this. So let's grab this distance, put zero here, and then put it on that side and hit okay. Okay, it's still not letting me do it. So what I'm gonna do is actually delete that because this is really highlighting how ridiculous Fusion can be with these sweeps, right? So I'm gonna try again. Uh, so I deleted that. I'm gonna select the profile and select our path, this, this shape right here. And instead, and you know, instead of hitting OK and then going back into it, let's try that again. That's 0 0.115, um, and then hitting OK. It's still not letting me do it. It keeps giving me errors, and this is the problem I kind of kept having with Fusion. I had to keep kind of messing with the with the thing until it let me do it. And in this case, I think it's not let me do it at all, which is unfortunate. Yeah, look at that. It's going really bonkers here. Yeah, um, I'm gonna keep trying though. Let me try the bottom sketch. Maybe that'll work. You see how like I kept using the top, now I'm gonna try the bottom. Okay, that still didn't work. Let's try to do a chain, to remove the chain selection right here. Let's turn that off so it only gives me half of the shape. So it's only sweeping that half of the shape. And then I'll go back in here and say, I only want, um, you know, 0.1 or 0.2. Yeah, and hit OK. And that worked. That is one of the, the things you kind of have to do. You just kind of have to keep playing with the sweep until it works. Sometimes it just works out of the get-go. But the answer there was to turn off the chain selection. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you don't. It's just one of those things. It, that's why I'm doing this tutorial, to kind of show, like, the, the inconsistency of it. It works, but you kind of have to work around it. Now... It'd be cool if I could do the other side, right? Like I could say, do this whole thing. 
and I could keep playing with that, but that's not working. So the, the thing that will work right away is if I could just mirror this feature. So that's how I was able to do that. I'm going to mirror the sweep. I'm going to pull up the mirror right there and then uh, turn the type into the features. And then in the timeline, you just select that, that sweep. Your mirror plane is default this, this side here because our shape is already in the center of the grid, more or less. It's symmetrical with the origin. Um, it will just do a nice mirror for us symmetrically. So hit OK, and then there's your uh, there's your sweep. So that's how I was able to create that sweep. Now the next sweep is done with a sketch that you kind of have to create a new uh, plane. So construction offset plane here. I need to kind of get to where I need to go. So I'm going to start with this plane and then kind of work my way up somewhere like that, 28. I'm trying to get in the middle here because this is kind of where I want my sweep to be. On this edge here, on this on this kind of paw right there, so 28 is okay. I'll click on that, and then I can use this to create my sketch, right? So I'll create my sketch, and then um, I will grab one of these edges, right? And I'm going to project it in. So it's selected. I'm going to hit the, the the hotkey P and project that in, and now I have some reference point. Now I have a reference point. You'll see it's not perfectly on the edge here because this is referencing the most outer uh, point of this shape. Um, so it's not going to be perfect, but we're pretty damn close, okay? <laughs> so from here, I'm going to create that shape again. So let's start with my triangle, like this. Sometimes I get this automatic horizontal constraint, which is really nice. This is going to be 2 millimeters tall. And then I need to define a 45 degree uh, dimension. And then these two lines are perpendicular, like that. And then this can move around, cool. Then I need to make a perpendicular line going up like this. And then I want to make this go out like that, making sure I get perpendicular constraint on the last two like that. And then I close it off here. Cool. Then I add a sketch dimension here, one and a half millimeters. Right. And then I can grab these, uh, grab this line and do a construction line out of it. Perfect. Uh, I need to glue this to these two so I can use collinear. Collinear will let me do that. And then I want to define some space between this line and this dot. How much? Probably like two millimeters like we did last time. Give Fusion a second, and there we go. Hit Finish Sketch. And now uh, let's try to make a new sweep here. So again, pull up the sweep. Click on that as my profile, my path. I'm going to go ahead and turn off Chain Selection and just select that edge. By default, it wants to like cut away because there's it, it notices that there's geometry. So I'm going to change that from Cut to Join. And then I'm going to start playing with these arrows. Um, maybe not even. I'm just going to put like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 type deal. Because playing with the arrows slows down fusion, in my opinion, in my experience. So from here, I kind of want to smooth this out. Maybe something like that. And I want this to come a little bit further out. So something like maybe that. OK. And you know you can play around with these values if you want them to be cleaner or whatever, more even. But it really doesn't matter to me. Um, so just hit OK. Hopefully that works. That worked fine. Cool. No errors. Wonderful. And then what I'll do is I'll mirror this. So let me hit uh, the, the mirror. You can select that in your timeline now. And then our mirror plane is our kind of default um, plane. And there you go. Those are our sweeps. Very cool. Now at this point, uh, that sketch that we have here in the center, remember that? Well, here I want to kind of start to eat away because you have all this thickness. It's four millimeters thick. It really doesn't need to be. So what I can do is I can grab that sketch, the inside of the of the offset, and I can change the direction to two-sided so that I can eat away the top and a little bit of the bottom here. How much? Uh, probably like that much. And that gives me a one millimeter bottom here. From here to here, it's one millimeter. If you wanted to make that bigger, let's just go back into the extrude and say this side should be two and a half. That way this and this is 1.5 1, 1. millimeters thick. And now you have this kind of tray, and you have this outer perimeter that has the snaps, and it has this additive thickness. And really why I did this was so that I can do this. Ready? Put a fillet, and now I can add a fillet to the bottom here, and I can add it as much as I want. I can go for the whole length of our distance here. So you have a like super curvy bottom. Let me turn off the analysis. You can see here how it looks out. It looks pretty good. Really, really bubbly at the bottom. And uh, it has all that geometry for snap fitting. This is just the bottom, right? Another thing you could do is you can maybe add a chamfer here, just to kind of thicken it up a bit. Maybe put three. No, it's too much. Two is fine. Looks good. You can add a, a chamfer. Uh, yeah, a chamfer there. 
And uh, if you do section analysis, you can see how it's it's going to add a little bit more smooth geometry to that. So it's not so uh, so abrupt. So that looks really well. And then um, I'll, for, for kind of quickness, I'll add a frame because you kind of want to have your frame and your covers together so you can see how much offset you need. So I'll create a new component with the, with the hotkey. Hit OK. And I will use the sketch from our first component by opening it like that. It's a little grayed out, but I can still use it. And I want this to be like, I don't know, 10 millimeters tall. Hit OK. Let's go ahead and change the color of it so that it's more, um, so they're more contrasty. Maybe do like a, a pinkish. And then I'll bring back the cover body, do a section analysis. You can see here, okay, cool. This is what I need to do. So I'm going to now add a shell to this surface and also the bottom surface right here of the frame to make it a frame, right? So I'll use the shell command. It's one of my favorite features. And how thick you want it, I want it to be one and a half millimeters thick. Hit OK. And now there's our frame, right? It's completely open bottom and open top. And now you can see where I need to add my sort of my, my little triangle to, to, to snap into this little grabber. So pretty similar. I'm going to come into, you know, into the, into the sketch. I'm in the right component. I have uh, this side profile here. And uh, I will project some geometry. Which geometry? This one right here, this line. Just bring that in, hit the hotkey P, and that'll give me a point to select to. So now I can do is I can make my triangle. Let's just make a triangle like this. Uh, we need to define the 45 degree angle. We need perpendicular uh, point here. So select those two perpendicular, and then this is two millimeters tall. Now that that's done, I can just drag this point and drop it. Oh, and drop. I don't know why it's not letting me. I'm going to select those two points, open up my design shortcuts, and say coincident. And now they're coincidentally constrained. So now I can sweep that, hit finish sketch, and I'm going to hide the you know the bottom cover, turn off the section analysis, and I'm going to just run the sweep command. Pretty default. Let's just select that triangle, go to path, and then select this as my path. It's going to, by default, it's like, ah, you want to cut? Nope, I want to join it. And hit OK. And that joins it. It does the entire sweep because the chain selection was selected. And now you can see it swept along it. Now there is an issue. You need to be now. I'm going to show you where the issue is. Now it looks all good, and it looks like it did it. But if we look very carefully, let me do a section analysis on the other side. Now take a look at this from the side. There is a itty bitty tiny gap in between those things here. Um, it's really difficult for me to show it to you, but indeed there is a tiny gap from here and here. They're not actually closed. It's because there's some just weirdness going on with the geometry, like it's not perfect. So here's how to fix it and make it so that it's completely watertight. Turn off the analysis and go back into, um, into our sketch. And all we need to do is to add some geometry. Let me turn on the section analysis. All we need to do is add some geometry that starts to eat into the, the in between the outer and the inner uh, surfaces, we just need to add some more geometry to this. So what I can do is I can grab a line and then just kind of draw out this thing here like that. It's just this little square. Let me turn off the body so you can see what I drew. It's just this thing here, right? Now how thick I need this to be, I can just take that one and a half millimeter, divide it by two, and that's a pretty good point. And now it's fully constrained, so I have these two profiles that I can select and append that. And if I turn the body back on, uh, if I turn the body back on, you can see that, yeah, that is intersecting the, uh, the, the actual geometry, which is what we want. We need them to intersect because once this gets sweeped along, at some point around over here, it starts to not be perfectly flush with the surface. So this right here ensures that you are eating into the surface, essentially. So I'm going to hit Finish Sketch, double click on that, um, that sweep, and then I will append that by holding down the Command key or the Control key on Windows, and then that will then ensure that that sweep is like going into the frame, into the geometry, and it is. So now if we do, if we, if we flip our, our, uh, our analysis, our section analysis, and look at where we saw that 
gap, there's no gap anymore. So that is how to fix that. And that is a really critical thing to look at. Cool. So now I'm going to turn on my, let me activate the whole doc, the whole root of the document. That way I can look at both of these uh, pieces together. And what we need to do here is to figure out how, how, uh, how much space is between, how much clearance we have between our, our surfaces. So this surface here, I'll click on that, hold down shift, and then click on this, and it'll tell me well, how much distance. It's at 0.3 millimeters, which is a little loose, in my opinion. It needs to be like a, a minimum of 0.2 and a maximum of 0.3. So I could leave that as is, but just to show you, I'm gonna click on show geometry, and you see this little uh, thing here, that two millimeters, I can drop this to 1.8 or 1.9, and that'll effectively make my, uh, my, my gap uh, 0.2. And remember, it's not going to be perfectly 0.2, it's 0.31, but that's okay. We're working with sweeps here. They're never going to be, they're not going to be 100% accurate, but that's enough gap uh, to kind of mess with there. And then we can look at the other side here, and it's basically a mirror, so it's going to be the same uh, distance between these two. Yeah, 0.231. So let's take a look at the other snap, which is this one here on this side. This is kind of the back. So if I click on this surface and then kind of rotate to this surface, it's a 0.351, which is a little bit too much. So I'll bring up the, uh, the snap again. I think it's this one. Right click, show dimension. And change that to, to uh, 1.8 like that. And then we can see that this surface and this surface are 0 0.209 millimeters away from each other. And that's pretty good, you know, that worked out pretty good there. Um, so if we wanted to create another sweep here, the reason why we didn't create one there is because that's where the USB port would be, right? So that's why I'm kind of doing that. And you can see that you have these, uh, these, these separations, these segments now in between the sweep so that you can actually get into it if you want to take it apart because it's actually fairly difficult to try to open this with your bare hands if you got nails i think you could do it but um I, I, yeah i'll actually show you folks now that i'm kind of pretty much wrapped up with the cad stuff um that's really it there for those two if you wanted to make the cover um this in this project the cover actually had a sweep let me do another section else it actually has a sweep going up over here because they're because of the tallness of the enclosure, I could make a sweep there and add a little bit of a of a of a of a snap fit geometry because there was nothing there really. Uh, it was just the bottom that needed that um, that's that that clearance there. It's a little bit more excessive, but yeah, the top also has pretty similar separations, if not more, so that you can get in there and open it. So with that out of the way, let me go back over to the, kind of the overhead and show you opening this thing up. Um, I have a spudger tool. You're like, what's a spudger tool? It's this. It's a tool designed to be super thin on this edge and this edge here so you can get and pry things open. So you can kind of start to see where uh, my thing would be. And this is where you get your spudger tool in. And you just pop it out like that. And then the rest of it can, can pop out pretty easy with your hands. This just kind of floats in there. But yeah, here is the the sweep geometry going over here, the side geometries here, they're a little bit shorter in the final design, but uh, again, like the values are, are kind of weird, right? They're not super accurate. And then the bottom here, same thing. Try to find a spot where it's open. I think this side is a little bit thinner. And then I found it to, to open it, not that way, but this way works better like that. Once you get one edge in, the rest of it pops open. And now I'll have to disconnect the USB port there. And then uh, there you go, there's the bottom, there's my cutie pie, and then here's the sides, here's the bottom, and then the sweep goes along this entire shape here for the frame on, on both the top and the bottom. Really, really cool piece of uh, design here. Um, all of this is modular, so you can just take it all out. And then here's all the sweepiness. And then to put it back together, just kind of line them up and then snap fit them, right? Right there, that's all that's left here is the back here. And there you go, pretty good type fit. Yeah, and uh, it stays pretty good um, in there. So that's the way it's working. Um, that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Let me know what you guys think. Are you playing around with splines and sweeps? Have you found yourself with some of these issues? Let me know, I'd love to hear about them because uh, there will be more crazy shapes with snap fits. 
that's going to do it for this one, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, don't forget to make a great day. Bye, folks.